Should I hold a teddy as well? Not that it's one. It's a bit small. Not that one. Oh, I love that. Well, where did you get it? Uh, my friend Daisy bought it for me. De it's Debbie. She's called Debbie. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am joined with a special guest. We've got... Hi, I'm Jemima. We've got Jemima and we've also got Percy Pig because he's cute, right? Um, so today we're going to be talking all things girly and we're going to be your sisters for 15 minutes straight. So we hope that you enjoy this video. Make sure to give it a thumbs up if you do and without further ado, Let's get on with the video. So first up, what we're going to be talking about is what we like in a boy and what we don't like in a boy. So I'll go first. What I like in a boy is I like them to be motivated. I like them to be kind and caring and to put themselves first, but also um, make sure that their girlfriend or wife or whoever it is, is OK as well. Um, and I just like someone that's funny and that can make me laugh, really. What about you? Probably the same. And then the things I don't like is if they're like always taking pictures of themselves and like, yeah. Yeah, like being big headed yeah. and kind of um, saying, you know, having a massive ego. Yeah. Um, and obviously we want them to feel confident, don't we, in themselves, but it when it goes over the top, it's just too much, personally, and we'd rather that not be the case. Question two is favourite hairstyle. You go first. What do you like? Um, Down, or like this, or like a really thin half up and half down, mm. or quarter up and... A quarter up and three quarters down? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Um, mine's probably, I don't really do anything with my hair ever, but I love having bead braids in. Um, and probably just two braids. I really like having braids or bubble braids, but I haven't done them in ages. So yeah. So a lot of us have insecurities and we're gonna share a few of ours with you to make you feel like you're not alone. So my insecurities are probably um, my nose, um and also the way i see my body in the mirror i don't like how my body is personally um what's your insecurities oh right <laughs> um go for two or three i'll do three okay go on then my double chin absolutely hate it my hips mm -hmm. hate it and my belly hate it and I think it's hard, isn't it? Because when we grow up, we've grown up with social media and being online a lot. And you always see people with perfect bodies and perfect lives, don't you? And it kind of makes you feel like you want to be that way. When in reality, it's probably just edited. And I think that's important for us to remember. And we're always going to have insecurities. But I think it's important that we have to try and learn to live with them and learn to love them, right? Question four is your celebrity crush. You go first. Mine's Phil Foden. He's beautiful. Mine's David Beckham. I don't know many celebrities, but he is pretty beautiful. So, okay. So we've been asked best way to work through friend problems. Now, Jemima's a bit of a pro at this. So um, what would be your best advice that you would give people? Well, it depends. Just don't let people bring you down because mm -hmm. many people are horrible and many people do be horrible to other people most of the time. Mm -hmm. And you just got to not let people bring you down. And sometimes people do struggle with that, but just try. Mm -hmm. and yeah. And if you're at school, obviously, if people are being horrible or bullying, then bring it to teacher's attention because they're the people that can shut them down and who can stop, right? And yeah. also if they've obviously got you on social media, then it's important to block them or to make sure that they can't contact you in any way. Um, and obviously you're always gonna find people that are horrible in life. Not everybody is perfect and not everybody is really kind. 
um, but it's important to kind of dodge those people and to find people that kind of attract the same energy as you. Question six is, does Phoebe give boy advice? And let's just start it off. No. no. Absolutely not. <laughs> I need boy advice. <laughs> she, she can't give boy advice. You need to give her, her boy, boy advice. advice. <laughs> Honestly. I went to an all-girls school and if you know, you know. Like, you don't ever see boys. And since that, I also work for myself. So I don't see boys ever in my life, do I? Like, it's... And so I need boy advice. So if anyone's got any boy advice, pop it in the comments. Because we need boy advice, right? Yeah. <laughs> or you need boy advice. Okay, so this question was asked probably the most, wasn't it? And that yeah. is um, first period story and advice for periods. Um, so Jemima hasn't started. Can I say that? Yeah. Jemima hasn't started, um, but obviously I have because I'm 22. Um, I started, I was quite a late bloomer, so I didn't start um, my period until like late year nine, early year 10, I can't really remember. Um, but one day, Abby was around, my best friend Abby, and we were about to go to dance in. And I went to the toilet and I started my period and I just literally walked back into my mum's room and I was like, I've started my period and she was like okay and she gave me a pad it's really that simple like it's not something to be scared of and even if you don't have a close relationship with your parents at the end of the day they're still going to help you and give you what you need um so i'd say definitely just tell someone as soon as you have started so you can get the right things and they tell you what to do and stuff like that um, Abby had already started hers way before me, like quite a few years ago. Um, so she was like, yay! <laughs> um, so that was my first period story. It's not very interesting or dramatic. Um, and then I just went to dancing. But yeah, I was a really late bloomer. I didn't start going through puberty till like year nine, year 10. Um, so I was like the latest one in my friendship group. Um, but yeah, I remember just like, telling my friends and be like I finally started and they were like it's about time gal and um, so yeah but period advice I would say just make sure that you have stuff in your bathroom or in your school bag and stuff like that where you can um, obviously have access to it if you do end up starting top tip have a little bag in your school bag yeah with loads of stuff in it and also a spare pair of knickers that's very important. Spare pair of knickers, always put them in. And then if you don't even use them, then you don't need them. But if you then leak, it's important, obviously, you need to change. So um, that's what I'd probably say. Which must be useful for other people. Definitely. So like, I remember obviously, cause I went to an all girls school, people would literally be like, has anyone got a tampon? Like all the time. And you'd just be like, yeah. Cause you know, some people may not do that. Um, so it's important to have those things for yourself and for other people as well but um yeah don't be worried if you haven't started and everybody else has everyone blooms at different ages i know my mom didn't start till she was like 17 which is really late and then some of my friends started when they were in year four year five which is really early yeah it's so uncomfortable when a pad's in your knickers no because it's like well, it depends how big it is like if you have a really heavy flow then obviously you need a bigger pad but it, it doesn't feel uncomfortable like you can't feel it maybe for the first time you use it you'd feel it and then you just get used to it like i personally prefer wearing pads i hate tampons i think they're really horrible and i can never get in right so it's one of those things where like you just choose what you want to do at the end of the day there's also like menstrual cups where it's like this and you can put them in but that scares me a little bit. But loads of people use them as well. It just depends what you want to do, really. Um, tips on shaving. <laughs> Don't do it. No, no. <laughs> right, so tips on shaving. Obviously, Jemima is a little bit young for this. Um, but she does have experience in it. <laughs> My advice would be don't start shaving until you feel like you really, really have to because the sooner you start shaving, the more the hair is going to grow back thicker and blacker. I know everybody's probably told you this, but 
it happens and it's so annoying like i used to use hair removal cream which was so much better and it would keep your legs smoother for longer i didn't start shaving until i was like year nine year ten because well i don't know i just didn't like i didn't feel the need to my hair was blonde and you couldn't really see it um, but then I kind of decided that maybe I should start and I did and it's important that you've just got a sharp razor It's not blunt because then you will cut yourself um... <laughs> um, And obviously make sure that you tell your parents that you're gonna do it as well because um, I Think yeah, it's important that they need to know um, but yeah, I'd say stay off it until you actually feel like you have to. Don't just shave your legs because everybody else shaves them. Because all my friends shaved their legs and I didn't. And then when I started, their hair was like growing back like at a fast rate and mine was just chilling. So yeah, that's top tips. But hair, hair removal cream is really good. Ideal date scenario. What would yours be? nice place like nice yeah. restaurant mm -hmm. not like i wouldn't go for like a pizza place where would you go for probably like a pasta place <laughs> okay <laughs> nice yeah anything else that you want to do mm, no no i'd say probably like i would like to go for a day maybe down the beach see there's two different dates i'd like to go on either something that's like really posh, summery yeah something that's like a nice restaurant just chilling having like um a nice meal and stuff or i would like to go down the beach get a takeaway go and sit watch the sunset chill music vibes do you right. know what i mean yeah i just think that's really nice and I like that. That's something that is a bit of me anyway. Another question that was asked quite a fair bit is, do you think that the sex ed um, talks at school are explained well? Now you've just literally had yours pretty much, haven't you? Yeah. And what? how did you feel? Like, what did they... I felt really uncomfortable. Um, did they separate the boys from the girls? Yeah. Right. So... In the girls, we talked about girl stuff, like period and stuff, and then in the boys, I imagine boy stuff. Yeah. Um, but when every time we like meet again, they would always tell us what happened, and I don't want to hear it because it's, I just find it really disgusting. <laughs> um, not gonna lie. But yeah, I. I wasn't a big fan. It was uncomfortable and was it explained well though? Did they go into detail? They showed us pictures. Right, okay. Okay. So I had mine obviously like how many years ago? 11, 12 years ago. 13 years ago. So I don't really remember it much. I just remember all the girls being together. But it's one of those things that's really awkward because half the class like you said no what's going on yeah. and half of the class have never heard yeah, it. Yeah, so right? some of the class mm -hmm. had no clue what it was about, but most of the class did. I feel like it's hard because a lot of people at your age know what's, what it's all about, and but some people obviously are brought up differently and they might not know, they might be a bit more sheltered, they might, you know, they might just be a bit younger for their age, they might not know about it. Um, so I think it's quite hard and obviously, at your age, it's still quite young to be told a lot of that stuff. Because what? when did you have it? Year five? Um, a tiny little bit in year five, but most of it in year six. But in year seven, we'll be learning more, which oh, okay. I'm not excited for. <laughs> yeah, so I think it's something that's quite daunting at the end of the day, like especially for your age. Um, and I remember it. I remember it being really awkward. But it's something that everyone's got to go through and have it do you know what i mean and they will continue to explain it as best they can and if you ever have someone where you feel like you're comfortable speaking to them then you can just ask them do you know what i mean yeah like you don't have to rely on teachers and stuff like that to be able to tell you like if you you're close to your mom or a big sister or just someone then you can just ask also it it's not just the teachers that 
like sort of make her uncomfortable is some of the questions that other people ask. Do they, is there a question like Q and A section? Will like, they ask? Students ask questions, but some of them are so graphic. Like, why did you ask that? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, I get a that. A bit disgusting and uncomfortable. Yeah, but it's only what an hour of your life. That you'll never get back. <laughs> okay, so this question was also asked a lot, um, and that is, how does Jemima respond to my mental health kind of state? Um, so what do you, cause we kind of, we've had a little discussion like a while ago, didn't we? Um, and I think it's important that people understand about mental illness cause it's something that is around a lot of people, right? Um, and obviously as you get older as well, you'll become a bit more clued up about it and you will understand and know a little bit more about it. But we kind of like spoke about how that my brain is a bit poorly and it's not you know it's not the same as other people um necessarily like it's not the same as your brain it's not the same as mummy's brain stuff like that um but how do you respond to it what's like your main thing that you do to kind of help me well one of the main thing is just like love you the way you are mm -hmm. and like i sort of know when you need a hug or not mm -hmm. and like even if it's a tiny one, I know when you need it. Yeah, you always know. Um, so yeah. Yeah, she's very like I feel like you're very with me on an emotional level and you you know, like you're one of the one people that do know when I need a hug or when I need just that little bit more kind of I don't know, reassurance or something like that. Um, but like I don't I don't always hide it. Like if I'm feeling rubbish and I'm around your house, you know I'm feeling rubbish. Yeah. Like it's not something like you I can hide. see the emotion in your face and mm -hmm. I'm also a bit wary. Like mm. not just the like not just about that, but like I know I keep I look at you and think, does she need a hug or not? Mm. Um so Yeah, like it's I think that as well, like it's not something that we've spoke about massively because I th feel like you're still a bit too young to understand that not to be patronising or anything like that. But mm. like even with Matilda, like I haven't spoken to her about it because I just feel like unless you've gone through it at a young age, there's it's hard to understand what's going on completely, if that makes sense. And like I said, I don't hide it. And she always knows if I'm feeling rubbish or like she'll see something I've put online and she'll always message me and be like, are you okay? Or I love you and stuff like that. And it's important for me to hear that as well. Um, so that really helps. Um, but that's kind of what she does to kind of look after me as much as possible as she can as being an 11 year old. Okay, the last question is last text to a boy. Right, who's gonna go first? You can. Aha. Okay, so um, I'm kind of talking with a boy at the moment and um, the last text, well, the last conversation we had was about meeting up because um, I haven't seen him in ages. And it was literally just me saying that he needs to put himself first because unfortunately one of his family members isn't very well at the moment. So that's really simple. That was the that was the last text of him that I had. Um, what was one of yours, and then I'll do a second one of mine. Okay, so so this random boy from my old school. Um, added you on Snapchat. Added me on Snapchat, and I was so confused because he, I, I <laughs> random. All I said. <laughs> was why did you add me <laughs> i love how to the point she is it honestly cracked me up <laughs> honestly um you can do your second one my second one was of a boy that was speaking to me and he was really annoying me and i just put okay <laughs> okay my the second boy is so his friend texted me on whatsapp mm. because he didn't have a phone at the time or mm -hmm. his phone was broken so he used his friends and he texted me saying this random thing and I was like, okay. And then I text my, one of my best guy friends and I said, your friend's really, really weird. And he was like, which one? And I said, 
Doesn't matter. <laughs> Why are we both so blunt? <laughs> We're actually so blunt to boys. <laughs> They um, just, they're just annoying, aren't yes. they, though? Like, Why do they just, like, do something and they don't even, like, know what they're doing? No, exactly. She's basically, she's decided that she really likes the taste of the salt lamp. It's just fluffy, though. Find a bit that's not fluffy. Fluffy, go on then. Ew! Not like it anymore? Uh, I don't even know if that, I know it's poisonous for cats, but I hope it's not poisonous for Jemima's because <laughs> No, it won't be. It's fine. Right guys, so I hope that you enjoyed this video and it helped you guys a little bit with some girly problems And um, if you do want any more videos of Jemima, make sure to let us know in the comments and that'll be really really lovely And um, please make sure to give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and let us know um, please also subscribe if you haven't already. I am back on YouTube now. Um, sorry for neglecting you for a little bit. Um, but hopefully I will see you again very soon with a new video. Bye!